Thank you, yeah, thank yeah. you, Deputy Speaker, and um, I thank the uh, Assistant Minister um, for his dissertation on growth. I would Very suggest there is a lot of um, content in that that's debatable, but he seemed to have forgotten the bit that's uh, called inclusive growth. And so I'd encourage him to have a bit of a look at uh, some of the other economic outcomes that are currently facing this country that might enlighten him around issues such as stagnant wages growth. Um, we've had probably in the last two hours or so a really interesting indication of where exactly those opposite are on inclusive growth. Um, perhaps someone perhaps the Treasurer could uh, the Shadow Treasurer could follow his book up with a inclusive growth for dummies that um, <laughs> those opposite seem to be keen to buy his books. I think that would be a particularly useful Flash addition. Guards, because just before question time, we had the most <laughs> astonishing performance by the member for Karangamite, <laughs> who wanted to lecture us on this side for taking some concerns about a senior that. member of the media, a woman who had uh, an issue with not getting equal pay. And the member for Karangamite was outraged about women across a number of uh, industry sectors and why weren't we talking about them? I don't know where she's been for the last 50 years. I mean, as long as I've been in this place, one of the very first committees I sat on did an inquiry okay. under a Labor government on pay equity, which led to significant reforms in the Industrial Relations Commission that saw pay equity cases successfully prosecuted. Why did we do that? Because we understand inclusive growth That's means right. that women across what were undervalued sectors of the economy deserved wage equity yeah, yeah. and pay equality. That's right. Then it was followed up by the Prime Minister during mm -hmm. question time, informing us um, from his lofty heights that not everyone has had a privileged ride to power. Oh. Well, he'd yeah. know, he he'd know, know, wouldn't he? <laughs> he'd know. I tell you what, from the top to the bottom, they the epitomise a complete inability to understand what we mean by inclusive growth and what the Australian community expects of growth in this country and the way in which it is shared. Yeah. We are one of the great examples among OECD countries of a structure in our economy and society that has meant a significant increase in the well-being and welfare of working class people. Right. And that has, is what over time has driven growth in this country. The, Assistant Minister wanted to talk about small business. Well, I've done some um, local events with small businesses in my area who understand that you go cutting people's wages, you are hurting their customers. Right. You are attacking the base in their community that are the people who come in and buy from them, that come in and have a meal at their restaurant, that come in and spend a bit extra on uh, those discretionary spending that you can do when you've got a decent uh, wage in place. That's right. Instead of doing that, what they're doing, those opposite are doing, is cutting away at the heart of the customers who feed those small businesses by refusing to take action on penalty rates, as, a, as an example. By, I mean, I can't believe it. Making comments about, you know, we need better wages growth in this country, and doing not only absolutely nothing to deliver that, but taking actions to cut away at the base of that. As the Shadow Treasurer said, this week we've had bills through this place to attack the wage level of people earning only $21,000 a year. These are people who go out and shop in the businesses in my electorate. These are the people who spend the additional money they have. The big end of town don't do that. They don't do that. They put it in a bit more of their own investments or off to shareholders and so forth. If you want inclusive growth, you have to understand how the economies <laughs> in our local communities operate, and they operate on the strength of the incomes that come in to the people who live in those, those communities and the purchasing power that they deliver into the businesses in our local area. So those opposite, top to bottom, whether they're saying, you know, people out in Western Sydney don't even own cars or drive very far, or, you know, those of you who can't afford a new house, just go and beg mum and dad. I'll tell you what, as a mum, I'm not real keen on that solution. Go and beg mum and dad for a bit of money. 
or indeed that um, you know getting paid four dollars an hour is a gift. Order. They're so Order. out of touch. Time they don't has understand expired. what it means. Like